Here we have a GitHub repo that has the ability to do ETL with SQLite. You know, you can see that I collect a data source, extract it, transform it, and then load this thing into SQLite database and then do a query on it. So let's go ahead and look at the code step by step. So in terms of a structure, what I would recommend is creating some type of library. In this case, we have mylib. It could be, you know, whatever it is the name of your library should be for your particular problem. In this case, though, we're going to put a scripts inside that do each of these actions. So we see first up, we have extract, right? So extract.py. Uh, and from here, what you'll see is that I'm using the request library and I pass in a URL and then I have a file path. And this file path will put this particular CSV file uh, after it's collected into data. So then I have a data directory here and you can see this is the collected CSV file. Next, what we do is we would do a transform and load. And so uh, in this particular piece of code here, it's all one step. I import SQLite, I import the CSV library. And what happens is I say, first let's print the full working directory and path. Now, this is generally a reasonable idea when you're doing some kind of, you know, loading of data on disk is if you're working with some kind of path here, not a bad idea to log the full working directory because depending on what environment you're on, you could have a slightly different path. And if you've hard coded something, it could cause some issues. Next up here, I connect to a new database that I create called GrocerDB. And then at this point, I say, look, drop the table if it exists, and then go ahead and create a new table with these uh, columns inside. Now, the columns just happen to be the same name as what's inside of this uh, CSV file here. So I wasn't really creative. I just went through and, and did a one-to-one -one transformation. Now, if you're working with a very large data set, it's very likely you would drop some of these columns. Finally, I then go in and I insert these into this uh, new database. I commit it and then I close the transaction and then I can even return back, uh, let's say, the name of the database that was actually created. Finally, in terms of querying, here I have a little bit of code that actually goes through here and it connects to that database I created earlier. And then I select uh, some of the data from the grocery DB and then uh, I can fetch however much I want. In this case, I'm actually selecting all, not just top five. And then I close that uh, connection. Now, this pattern is a pretty good pattern for a lot of projects, but what you may do as well is then put it into a main file. And then look at this. All I do is I say from my lib dot extract, uh, import extract from my lib dot transform load, import load from my lib dot query, import query. And then step by step here, I do each of these actions. So in order to run it, it's pretty straightforward. All I need to do is just say uh, Python main.py and it's going to go through, it's going to extract, it's going to load, and then it's going to go ahead and do a query. So this is a pretty good pattern for many projects. If you use a portable environment like GitHub Codespaces, it's also a great place to kind of kick the tires as well.